What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp woodworking tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to talk about a couple different applications like um, creating true elevation views, working with dimensions, and also how to print your model off. And before I jump into it I do want to thank Andre Garcia for uh, supporting me on Patreon yesterday. Uh, like I've said before, Patreon is where you guys support the show and um, that just helps me go out and uh, you know afford different extensions and other things to make the show better. So thanks a lot, Andre. I really appreciate it. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is creating an elevation view in your SketchUp model. So right now, a lot of the time when you uh, work with your model, you're going to want to create a true elevation view. And so in order to really understand how this works, uh, you need to understand how the cameras in SketchUp work. So right now, what these models have is they have something called perspective. And so perspective means that all of these different lines go to a vanishing point. So you can see right now, if I look at this, the green axis is going off to the horizon right here. Well, if I was to draw a line straight out along the green axis, and let's say I did it for, let's say a mile. You can see how SketchUp displays them as intersecting, even though they never actually intersect in the model space. So that's just the way that the camera renders this uh, model. And so what that means is when I come in here and I try to pull like a front elevation view, so you can see how right now, like these corners aren't really lined up and this just isn't really a true elevation view. So what we wanna do is we wanna go up here and we want to go up to camera and we wanna click parallel projection. And so when we click parallel projection, what that means is that now if I come in here and I look at this line, like if I look at it straight forward, you can see how these don't really hit each other on a vanishing point anymore. They're more parallel. So what that means is now I can create a true elevation view. So you can see how there's no perspective in here. So these doors all line up. This is actually a real projection or a real elevation view that now you can come in here and you can work with and that means a few different things um, but probably the biggest thing so so this is what like architects use when they're creating like plan views and that sort of thing so you can see how here if I do a top-down view if I do perspective so if I turn perspective back on and then I try to do a top-down view you know, again, this does pretty good, but there's still some perspective going on in here. So in order to create true plan and elevation views, you just need to go up to camera and click parallel projection. And this is gonna get important in a minute when we talk about printing, printing tiled versions of our uh, model to scale. And so before we do that, though, I want to talk a little bit about dimensions. And so dimensions are something you can add that'll show like lengths and widths um, of things in your model. So like, for example, I've got this cabinet in here that I used um, that I created with an extension called GKWare Cabinet Maker. And I'll link to that in the notes up above just in case you're curious about that. It's kind of a very, very uh, advanced cabinet making extension what we want to do here is we want to create some dimension lines that show the actual size of this object because this object is modeled to scale and so what we want to do is if you go to the large tool set um, it's going to show up over there and if you don't have the large tool set just go to view toolbars select large tool set and close and then that'll show up but you're looking for the one over here called dimension and you can see I want to put my mouse over it it says you can draw dimension lines between any two points so what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate that and then we're gonna move our mouse in our model and we're just gonna click between two points and you can see how when I click between two points what that does is that draws a dimension line between those two points that I can then place so I've basically told it okay measure the length between these two points and then to actually put this somewhere I'm gonna click again so in this case I want to click that off to the side that way when I'm kind of in my front elevation view that still shows up and so what you can do is you can use this for multiple different measurements in your model so like for example we can go ahead and we can take this and we can dimension across the top and then we could also dimension on the inside of this face so we can see what the actual 
width of this top piece needs to be inside of these end panels. And then you can go back to your front view and now you have your dimensions in here. So now you could print this off and uh, you know put it on a wall while you're working on it so you don't have to have SketchUp open to see all your dimensions, that sort of thing. So, and uh, you can come into your entity info on each one of those objects and you can do things like change the way they're aligned. So like if I click on this and I click align to dimension, you can see how this is gonna go along the dimension instead of across it. Um, you can adjust what your endpoints look like. So you can change these little arrows. You can change where your text position is. So you can do a lot of different things in here to really kind of customize what this shows. You can also, if you want, you can come into this extension or uh, into this dimension you can right click and you can click edit text and if you wanted to make a note in here like full height or whatever you could just right click on this and rename it so you can come in here you could also delete these out and just know inner piece or something like that I wouldn't necessarily recommend that because the whole point of us doing this generally speaking is uh, is to be able to come in here and see different lengths but you can definitely do that if you want to so you can also come in here and adjust your font so like let's say you wanted these to be bigger you can come in here and adjust the size and do all that different stuff in the entity info and you could also I believe you can select multiples so if you wanted to select all of these you could just do a shift click click on all of them and then click change font and then you could just you could adjust all of those at once so you can kind of customize the way those the way that you want and one thing I would recommend is you can come in here and you can right click on these and you can hide them if you don't want them to show up but the problem is if you remember we've used the outliner in the past to keep our models organized well since these aren't true geometry they don't show up in the outliner so you can't come in here find your dimension line and unhide it so what I would recommend instead of doing that is I would recommend putting these all on a layer so in this case what I would do you can see I've got some layers in here for my cabinet but what I would do is I would come in here and I would select all of these I would create a layer and call it dimensions and then you can put all of these on that layer by coming up to your entity info clicking the drop down and setting dimensions so now you can come in here and you could turn these on and off so if you want a view of this without your dimensions you can have them in there um, if you want it with your dimensions then you can turn the layer back on so that's just something that kind of makes your model easier to switch between different options so you could also if you had like like if I had dimensions for the box itself and then dimensions for like the doors or that sort of thing I could put those on different layers so I could call it dimensions dash door dimensions dash box that sort of thing if I wanted to so a lot of different options for working with dimensions in order to show the actual size of stuff in your model. So, and then the last thing I wanna talk about is I wanna talk about printing an object. And so a lot of the time, there, there's a couple different things about this as well. So sometimes what people wanna do is they wanna print off like just kind of a view of their object. And so like if you wanted to put this up on a wall and then um, you know out in your workshop or that sort of thing, a lot of people want to do that and so in order to do that all you would do is you would just go up to file and usually you want to go to print preview because when you go to print preview then uh, it's actually going to show you what that looks like and before it prints it and that's probably what you want to do and then there's a few options in here when that comes up um, probably the one that you want to talk about first is this fit to page option and so when you select fit to page it's going to take your current view and it's going to fit it to your page so you can see how it's basically got my view and it's got it in here it's got it in here it's got it fit to the page ready to go and so if you just wanted to fit that to the page you could do that and that's going to reflect whatever your view is so like for example for example if I wanted to print like a perspective view you can print that as well so if you wanted to print off a perspective view like this you could definitely do that like let's say I just wanted something that had the height and then the width I would just adjust this to whatever view I wanted then come in here file print preview make sure fit to page is checked and hit OK and you can see how that's gonna print this and it's gonna be a little rough in the free version of SketchUp so the way this prints out 
um, I'm, I'm not sure if this has to do with this being rendered as a vector line or a raster line. Those are more layout type things. If you want to print super high resolution type stuff, you're probably going to have to get the pro version so that you can print to, or so that you can export to layout. But you can definitely print your stuff off this way. The other thing you could do is you could come into your printer settings. And if you wanted to be uh, more efficient with your space, you could come in here and you could, um, and it's going to be different for every printer, but you can set it to landscape. So you would just go up to properties and you would look for the little box that says landscape and hit OK. So you can see how when I set that to landscape, that fits a lot better in my view. So you can come in here and you can adjust that. And then the other thing that you can do is you can also select a style so that you're not printing gray in the background and wasting ink. And so in order to do that, you can just click this little drop down for styles. And instead of going and finding a new style, which you can do, there's definitely some uh, like default styles in here, like probably this construction documentation style, that sort of thing that'll let you print this. So you can see how if I select something like the construction documentation style, then this has a white background. So that way you're not printing gray in your background. So now if I do a print preview, um, and I go ahead and hit OK, you can see how this is on a white background, so you won't waste nearly as much ink. So that that's another way to do this. You could also, if you had your architectural design style, you could just go in to your settings, click Edit, go to your background settings, and you could just turn the sky off and set your background to white if you wanted to. So that's another way that you could do that. So there's a few different ways that you could adjust that. And then the other thing I want to talk about is printing to scale. So a lot of the time people want to print something to scale. Like for example, if you were to want to create this curve on a piece of wood, a lot of the time you can design it in SketchUp and then print it on a few different uh, sheets of paper in order to... Um, a lot of the time I think people like uh, just paste that on top of the piece of the wood so that they can see exactly what they're trying to do. So in this case, just to give you an idea, so this is about four feet long, and this was, I believe, about an eight inch wide piece to begin with. And so a lot of the time what people want to do is they want to print this to scale. And so what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to get the view that you want. And so in this case, I'm going to select probably a top down type view. And I'm going to use this option called zoom extents. And probably what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hide this other stuff so that this will zoom, this will fit this to your screen. So that's another option you can find up here. It's called Zoom Extents. So you can zoom wherever, and then if you click Zoom Extents, then it's just going to fit this to your screen. And so what we want to do is we want to print this to scale on multiple sheets of paper. And SketchUp actually does a bunch of this uh, fairly automatically. So in this case, though, what we're going to want to do is you're going to want to be in parallel projection mode because if you go up to File, print preview you're gonna to want to set this to scale and this will not allow you to do that if you're in perspective view it'll only let you do it if you're in parallel projection view so you can see how I uncheck this box for fit to page but it doesn't let me adjust my scale and so it's not gonna let me tile everything so what we want to do is we want to go to your camera and like we did before, we're going to click Parallel Projection. And that means that we're in kind of a true plan view. And then you're going to go to File, Print Preview. And then now, if you remember before, we had the box for Fit to Page checked. Well, now we're going to uncheck that. And you can see this box in here is for Use Model Extents. So that'll take the entire extents of your model in here. If you just wanted to use the view that you selected, you can just you can just uncheck this box. But what we're really worried about is the scale section. And so right now you can say in the printout, one inch is going to equal seven SketchUp inches. What we want to do is we want to set this to one inch. So now we're saying for every one true inch in SketchUp, we're going to want one true inch in your printout. And you can see how that changed the number of pages in your tiled sheet print range. So SketchUp is going to tile this sheet so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to click OK and then you can see how this looks like a blank page but it's not so if you start clicking on the next page up here you can see what SketchUp is doing is it's actually tiling your sheet so you can see how this is part of my curve so as I click this down 
you can see how it's printing off different parts of your curve. And so what you would do is you would just kind of cut this out and then line everything up to have like a full, full on view of this. And so one thing that you're going to want to note here is you probably want to erase out this dimension line. So then if I go back to print preview, you can see how just not having the dimension line in there reduce the number of pages. The other thing we're going to want to do is switch this back to portrait. So now if I click back and forth between these, you can see how if you would print this off, these would all be like actual to scale. So like actual size, real life, that you could kind of paste together on a piece of wood and work with. And so I've had some questions before about, um, about not being able to get this kind of line up. And one of the things that I thought about is you might be able to use the Sandbox Tools um, Grid Creator. So just go up to, uh, just right click on this, uh, right click up by your toolbars, go down and select sandbox. So what you would do is you would come in here and you would select the from scratch option, um, type in one inch to make and hit the enter key. That'll make it draw a one inch by one inch grid. And then you would just draw kind of a small grid behind your object. So now if you were to zoom your extents and go back to file, print preview, and make sure you have your model extents selected, now when this prints off, it's gonna have a grid where you can actually line up those lines. So you could actually line up where these lines are so that you have kind of a visual uh, representation of where these all line up. So if you're having trouble getting things aligned, you might want to think about using the sandbox tools um, in order to draw this grid. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Um, was this helpful to you? Does it give you some good ideas? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. That's got everything from links to my Patreon page to some other ways to support the show. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.